One very important topic in the context of hemodialysis is the blood flow rate from the patient to the hemofilter. On this particular issue, a large part of the dialysis session efficiency depends. So, this will be the focus of our discussion in this episode and next ones, God willing. This is Mohamed Abdelaziz and thank you for watching. As an introduction to this topic, we know that blood flows in human body, in veins and arteries. For dialysis patients, we need to draw blood out of the body to be purified from toxins and nitrogenic wastes. The question is, where will we draw it from? From vein or artery? To answer the question, let's make a simple comparison between veins and arteries. Veins in blue, arteries in red. The veins have very low blood flow speed, which is not sufficient for sustained hemodialysis, unlike the arteries. The arteries have strong walls to handle fast and high blood flow speed. A vein has a large internal diameter and a thin wall thickness, unlike the artery. The artery has a smaller internal diameter and a thick wall thickness. Also, the vein is flexible, can expand approximately to 10 times as much as the artery. Also, the vein can exist near to the skin surface. So the needle penetration, the dialysis needle penetration will be better in the vein due to large internal diameter, thin wall thickness and flexibility and proximity to the skin surface, unlike the artery. Now we answer the question. We need to connect the artery to the vein to benefit from the high blood flow speed from arteries as well as benefit from the ease of needle penetration in the vein. The connection take many forms, AVFs, AVGs, arteriovenous vistulas or arteriovenous grafts. As we see here, the anastomosis here is radiocephalic vistula. So the blood will be in a high speed in the vein. The dialysis patient connected to the machine through an extracorporeal blood circuit consists of the arterial needle and the venous needle, the blood lines or the tubing set. The blood pump rotates to draw blood from the arterial needle and pumps it to the hemofilter to be purified from toxins by the aid of the dialysis machine and returns it back again to the patient via the venous needle. This process lasts for four hours per session on average. Now, look at the number here, 300 or whatever. What does it mean? Most of operators think that it is the speed of the blood pump. And in fact, it's not. Look at the phrase above the number, rate, and the measuring unit, milliliter per minute. What does it mean? It means that when the blood pump runs for one minute, it will deliver 300 milliliter of blood to the hemofilter. So this number represents the blood flow rate, which is the amount of blood withdrawn from the arterial limb of the patient via the machine blood pump and delivered to the dialyzer per minute. So amount of blood per minute, it makes sense for the measuring unit to be milliliter in minute. Now. Let's formulate an easy and simple equation. The blood flow rate will equal to the blood pump speed and the stroke volume. Let's symbolize to the blood flow rate by PFR, blood pump speed, by N, stroke volume, by S. Now, how to determine N and how to determine S. N, the pump speed, will be the number of revolutions per minute. What about S, the stroke volume? Simply, it is the volume of blood ejected with each revolution. Revolution, cancel revolution. So the blood flow rate will equal to blood volume per minute. Makes sense. But wait a minute. How to determine the blood volume ejected with each revolution or the stroke volume? Actually, it is the bump segment volume. What is the bump segment? It is the part of the blood line surrounds the blood bump, where the, ro the rotor rotates around it to shift the blood from here and deliver it to the hemofilter. The blood volume in this tube equal to the bump segment volume, which is the stroke volume. How to determine this volume? Okay, if we extend this tube, it will be like a pipe. 
So the volume of this pipe equal to the volume of a cylinder by R square H or L, where L is the length of this tube. By the way, I measured it manually for Fresenius machine 4008 series equal to 23.5 centimeter. R is the internal radius of the bump segment line a millimeter. The machine operators should know that there is another entry should be entered to the machine other than the blood flow rate, which is the internal diameter of the bump segment. By pressing these two keys and enter the number according to the manufacturer of the tubing set. Now back to our equation. The blood flow rate equal to stroke volume multiplied by bump speed. So the stroke volume by R square L, R square a millimeter square, and the length we will convert from centimeter to millimeter, so it will be 235. Look at this, millimeter square, millimeter. So the resulting unit will be millimeter cubic. On the other hand, the blood flow rate in milliliter. How to convert from millimeter cubic to milliliter? Simply by divide this number by 1000. Okay, now we have three variables. The blood flow rate, the internal radius of the bump segment, and the number of revolution per minute. How to determine each of them? The blood flow rate assigned by the physician according to the patient parameters. The internal radius will be assigned to the manufacturer of the blood lines or the tubing set. And the third variable is the number of revolution per minute done or calculated by the machine based on the entries of the two variables. So please be careful and enter these two values correctly to enable the machine to calculate the number of revolution per minute correctly. Now, let's rearrange the equation from the machine point of view. The number of revolution per minute will equal to blood flow rate multiplied by 1000 divided by, by R square multiplied by 235. This is a very important equation. Let's take an example to clarify the importance of this equation. Okay, assume that the required blood flow rate by the physician, 300 milliliter per minute, and the internal diameter of the actually used tubing set bump segment, 8 millimeter. How much in? How much number of revolution per minute will be? Okay, by direct compensation in our equation, so the number of revolution per minute done by the machine based on these two variables will be 24 25.4 revolution per minute. If we change the bloodlines manufacturer and we have new specifications for the internal diameter, if the new internal diameter 6.8, how much in? By the same way, the number of, of revolutions per minute done by the machine based on these values will be 35 revolution. Now, look at this. We have the same blood flow rate but different number of revolution per minute. Why? Simply because we have different stroke volumes. The stroke volume varies according to the internal diameter. If the internal diameter increase, the stroke volume increase. So the machine will minimize the number of rounds to achieve the targeted blood flow rate and vice versa. When the internal diameter decrease, the stroke volume decrease and the machine need to run more rounds to achieve the targeted blood flow rate. So please take care of the internal diameter. Here I want to point to a common problem. Most of machine operators forgot to change the internal diameter when they change the manufacturer of the tubing set. This could lead to some consequences maybe have negative impact on the dialysis session efficiency. Let's clarify with an example. Assume the required blood flow rate 300 milliliter and the internal diameter of the actually used blood line bump segment 6.8 and the saved value on the machine for the internal diameter is 8 and doesn't change it what will the, the actual blood flow rate will be. The actual 
blood flow rate will equal to the actual stroke volume which will be calculated based on the actual internal diameter which will be 8.5 milliliter and the number of revolution per minute calculated by the machine will be based on the saved value which is 8 so the number of uh, revolution will be 25.4 revolution so the resulting the actual blood flow rate will be 216 where the required was 300 look at this you ask the machine to give 300 milliliter of blood to the hemofilter and she gives 200 only so the dialysis station efficiency will be decreased let's reverse this if the actual internal diameter 8 and the saved value on the machine 6.8 and doesn't change it the required blood flow will be equal to the actual stroke volume which will uh, calculate it based on the actual internal diameter 8 it will be 11.8 milliliter number of revolution will be calculated based on the saved value 6.8 which will be 35 revolution so the resulting will be 413 milliliter per minute and you want 300 only so the machine will give you more much more than you require yes the increase in blood flow increase the efficiency of the dialysis station but could harm the patient that suffer from cardiac activity failure so Please remember to change the internal diameter on the dialysis machine when you change the manufacturer of the blood lines. You have to enter the value according to the specification of the manufacturer. Thank you. Best regards. Keep in touch.